Hi YouTube, <clears throat> Sister Kate here. Wanted to make a semi-serious video um, based on two movies that Pastor and I have seen in the last couple of days. Um, one of them is called 71, it's apostrophe 71, and I'm sure it's, probably no one's heard of it. It was a um, <clears throat> movie made about the Irish uh, Civil War and it was set in 1971 so that's why it's called 71 and it doesn't have any big stars that any of you all would recognize in it but I found it fascinating and also terrifying um, and I found it fascinating because I, I knew of the Irish struggles and I knew um, about the IRA and there's movies and you know movies are not reality but sometimes people base movies on reality um, Brad Pitt one of his early movies was about him coming to live in the home of uh, a character played by Harrison Ford and he is an IRA member who's coming over from Ireland into the Boston area I think to um, try to get money for the cause um, and it's, you know, I'm not going to go into the Irish struggle and how Britain was so horrible to the Irish, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What terrified me about that movie was a British soldier who's very new to the army is left behind in a part of Belfast, Ireland, that is extremely um, opposed to the British side of things. And he has to run for his life, and he's only there over a matter of hours, but his, his experience starts with a kid walking up to the soldier standing next to him and shooting that soldier right in the face and killing him right there. And then he chases the kid and gets into the warren of this <coughs> government housing over there, and he gets lost, and now he's on the run behind enemy lines, <coughs> which is never a good thing. And there's plenty of movies about that sort of thing. Um, there's one with Gene Hackman in it, and the soldier is behind enemy lines in Vietnam, and he's got to go in and, and uh, rescue him, or he is the soldier, and someone rescues him. I don't remember, but I mean, there's plenty of stories about that situation, and it's dangerous. It's really dangerous, um, unless you can figure out how to blend in. And in this particular case, he has a British accent and a British soldier's uniform in a poor part of Ireland where everyone is Catholic. And so if he talks and he can't um, copy their accent, that and, and his uniform, the way he looks, is immediately going to show, you know, is immediately going to identify him as a stranger. And not just a stranger, but a stranger that these particular people hate with a passion so much the, so that their young men at 14 and 13 and 15 are wanting to assassinate you know British soldiers and it was a it was a really tough time and what f scares me so, so much is how dangerous how little leeway you have if you're in that situation if um, and I could say in America there are places in America where one person of a certain variety being in a certain part of a certain city would stand out in the same way. The way they talked and the way they looked would immediately identify them as someone who didn't belong there. Um, some parts of DC, some parts of New York City, you know, and I'm not saying it's even American, although it is, I mean, you could say black and white or, you know, Asian and or Hispanic if you're in the wrong part of a a town, if you're one culture or color or whatever, you're going to stick out and it's going to be dangerous for you. Um, I'll give you another example. In Barcelona, Spain, where that latest um, terrorist activity happened, we knew someone who actually lived there and she said the local people, who are not even Spanish, they're an offshoot of S Spanish and they don't necessarily even speak Spanish, they speak an offshoot hated Americans and so when they were living in that certain part of that uh, Spanish city they were constantly being derided and treated less than um, but that's that's being treated less than is not the same thing as people actively want to shoot you as soon as they see you or can identify that you are different 
and that is something that's um you know the millennial man and like my pastor joe fox make videos about how things are changing in america and how lines are being drawn um just look at charlottesville and you've got two sets of people and they are diametrically opposed not their appearance is going to make them stand out the people who support nazi stuff often have those nazi symbols um the antifa people now have a uniform that they wear and so you can tell on site if that person is someone who you agree with and want to support or you are diametrically opposed to and when you see them you know often people get really really worked up about that sort of thing but even here in america like you know you can't just kill that person it's not a state of civil war at least not yet and it it becomes a very fuzzy gray area when you have things like military trying to keep law and order in a civilian populace um, and also the crowd that was the thing about being in that part of that irish city the crowd was made of all age groups uh, it wasn't just young men who were out protesting against these british soldiers it was little kids from three years old all the way up to grandpas and so when there was a riot it was all those age groups yelling and screaming and surging forward and surging backward and sometimes throwing molotov cocktails and many times throwing rocks or bags of urine and it doesn't hurt a soldier to be hit with a bag of urine but it's nasty and that's going to make his you know him flare up and people yelling and screaming i mean nobody wants to beat up a grandpa nobody wants a grandpa trying to beat them up nobody wants to beat up a three-year-old nobody wants to uh have them trying to throw rocks at them it's a very volatile situation i found that scary um so i recommend you see that movie if you can get a hold of it it's called 71. And then the second movie we watched um, was called The Circle, and it's very new. I, I don't know when it came out. I don't know if you can get it on DVD or what, but uh, a friend gave us a copy of that, and so we watched that. And it's based on, and you can check this for yourself, I think it's Steve Jobs um, had a plan for his building for where his work was going to take place and it was called the circle and it, he bought the land and built a lot of it i don't even know if it's running right now or not i doubt it is excuse me because he was the main push behind it but it was like going to be a community type workplace that had all the things that were in the movie with daycare and health care and um pottery and art things and just a library and all all the deals so if you worked there you could also have all your needs met by by being there but this particular movie pushed it way beyond that. They made it so that if you um, worked there, you had to join whatever their social network was. And everyone was linked all the time to each other in that network. So uh, the character, she gets there, she's new, she's starting her job there. And an actual uh, crew of people comes down and talks to her about why she hasn't linked in to their social network yet. And they knew what she had been doing over the weekend. And they talked to her about that. And they told her, hey, we got all these clubs and things. You really should get involved, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they made it a kind of peer pressure that's co sort of like the... Um, well, if you don't, you know, if you don't give half your paycheck to people who save butterflies, you're just not a very sensitive person, are you? That kind of underhanded pressure to get her involved. And then it, it just got bigger and bigger so that they had her wearing a camera all day long, every day. She got little breaks like three minutes at a time to go to the bathroom. But otherwise, she was linked in all day long, every day. And um, it turned into a very ugly situation where a friend of hers, she did a little blurb on her, you know, channel about this friend who made chandeliers from antlers. Um, and it, he got all this hate mail because it was people who are, you know, you kill deer, you're a hunter, you're a horrible person. And they hounded him basically to death. Um, he f was trying to flee away from these people and because it was on this social thing um, they did sort of a Pokemon find the Pokemon thing with him and and anyone with a phone who was on that s deal s when they saw him they like chased him and then he he his car crashes and he dies and 
And so they, in that movie, there's, they are proponents of, they are putting out the idea that nobody has a right to personal privacy because your life being under a camera like hers was is a benefit to all mankind. So everyone should have a link like that at all times, everywhere around the world, the whole world united and all linked in together, which is a terrifying idea, horrible. And there's plenty of people who think it would be a great idea. Oh yeah, you should be able to watch, you know, this dog over here and what he does 24 hours a day because you're gonna benefit from that. And it's not his right to deny you that experience. That's a very dangerous way of thinking and it's incorrect, it's totally wrong. It's also what you could consider democracy. It's almost like communism. You know, whatever the majority wants is what, the, what should go. And so if the majority wants to watch you all day long, then you have no right to say no to the majority. That's kind of what a democracy is. Um, and that's not what America is. America is not a democracy. America is a democratic republic. And in a democratic republic, every person has a right to their privacy. Every person has individual rights. Not the mass of the whole country gets to say what you have to do with your life. That's more communism, socialism, or fascism. So it, I found that also very scary. Like that there, people are being raised right now with the idea that they have a right to some sort of invasion into your life. But that's not guaranteed by anyone. What's guaranteed by God is that you have a right to your life and you have a right to your happiness individually um, and protection and security in your own person. Not everyone in the world gets to own you, no. No, 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 that's wrong. And of course they showed it in the movie as well, where um, she, while you know the world's watching her, she connect, uh, oh, my child, connects to her parents, calls her parents up and her parents are having an intimate moment and the whole world gets to see it and her parents are absolutely livid and, and don't want anything more to do with her. And that's, uh, that's obvious. Like, do you really, does anybody really want to have a camera in the bathroom with them when they go to the bathroom? I don't think so. I mean, I don't. Do you want to have a camera watching you sleeping? I don't. I don't think most people do, but this is a move and it's, it's scary. It's not right. And so if you get a chance to watch that, the circle, um, watch it and realize there are people out there who want to make this happen and that it's your job to put the kibosh on that if if there's any way for you to do that for you to say no to that sort of invasiveness whether it be homework your kids are coming home from or coming home with or if you are on a website and it's a proponent of that you should voice that I don't agree with this or if there's some way for you to influence local laws or rules you, you know you should say that is your chance to say no this is not right we're not going to do this we're not going to put cameras up everywhere we're not going to take away an individual's right to their own privacy all right bless you i hope this edifies someone shalom